I'd be interested to hear uh, typologies that any of you guys are seeing. Uh, Amber from your clients, Giles from some of your clients, Joseph, some some typologies, especially those ones that people that work in traditional finance uh, might be interested in hearing. Uh, I'd be interested in that. I got an interesting one from this week that we're tracking down. Um, if anybody's interested, it's related to crypto, identity theft, and bank accounts being used as mule accounts. Mm. Anybody interested? Go for it. Of course. So um, last year, twice, we had these little incidences where we'd see um, one of these banks, and they were smaller banks, pretty new bank, and they have only an online process. They don't have a uh, physical presence. And people are going in, opening accounts, sending us money. We would, They would immediately buy crypto, send it to some wallet, most of the time park it, Although a little portions would go to some weird, strange website, maybe like $20 or $30 to a dark web or to some weird mixer or something like that. And we haven't seen the pattern since probably September last year. And we noticed it, but we never got any chargebacks. Like they were all e-transfers and we never got any chargebacks. The banks never contacted us. So we just like, okay, well, maybe they are legit because everything matched up. The credit bureaus, the IP addresses, the email addresses made sense. Um, the information always correct. The phone numbers are a little bit off, um, but not too far off. They're usually in the right jurisdiction, either Quebec or Alberta or Ontario. Um, but they didn't match up 100%, so we would ask for certain documents, we get them, and everything checked out, and then they disappear, we never see them again. And usually it's about, mm, about a thousand, so maybe sometimes they'll start off at $100, and then they'll do 980, 975, 990, typical stuff, thinking that they're not getting ID. But we ID everybody at zero. And um, the last two weeks, we've seen approximately 30 new accounts from this little bank, which is very unusual, um, all coming in. One of them came in about three days later and said, hey, why are you pulling a credit bureau check on me? I didn't authorize it. And they used a different email address. And we're like, hmm, that's strange. So we contacted the back and said, well, you signed up with uh, signed up with your service and blah, blah, blah. No, I didn't sign up with your service. And they're like, oh, apologies. Yeah, uh, you must be a victim of identity theft. And they're like, yeah, I just found out my credit my credit score was pulled from two other crypto exchanges. And I'm like, hmm. So we started investigating and pull all the, the ones from that little bank. And sure enough, there's about 40 of them in the last three weeks, four weeks. And we started investigating. And 10 of them have the exact same um, crypto spend, same pattern, 980, 990, um, and no chargebacks from the banks, no nothing, except this guy never opened that bank account. So we're thinking, okay, these bank accounts are being opened by using identity theft, and they're all good credit, three year history score, everything matches up. Um, basically bypassing the whole system. So they must have bypassed the same or similar type of KYC for non-face-to-face -face at the bank. And we're suspecting that the funds are going into the bank account from somewhere else, like a line of credit or a money mule account or something else. And then uh, they're getting quickly emptied out to crypto exchanges, uh, one, of ours, one of us being ours, and then straight out to crypto. And then they let it sit for a little bit. Sometimes going, like I said, little amounts here and there. It was to um, bypass dot something. And then the other one was uh, WebEx wire. Um, one was sort of legit. The other one was already marked as uh, high risk. So we started investigating 10 of them, bang on. They were like pattern exactly the same, uh, same MO. Phone numbers, all the phone numbers were pretty much prepaid phone numbers. So they were the phones that are like burner phones. Um, and we're trying to contact the bank. We haven't gotten to that level yet because we're still trying to figure out who the people we contact. So I'm going to name uh, two people I want to contact. If anybody knows anybody at this bank, you want to reach out. It's a small bank. I won't name names right now. Um, 
but if you know any of the smaller banks that are recently being a bank, um, reach out. And we're suspecting the same thing's going to start happening for RBC because or we're going to be on the lookout for RBC because they're the, the latest one, the biggest one that introduced non-face-to-face -face account openings. So we're still in the middle of investigating. We filed a VER because we're not, there's no way of filing an STR on this in FinTrack yet. And we put tagged it with Project Participate. So we're hoping that it gets to the RCMP or the RCMP uh, based on our call earlier this week pulls it. Um, but we've got 10 there and we've eliminated two since we've submitted that one. And we've got another 28 to go roughly to see if they are legit or not legit. But so far the numbers, when we call them, they go to dead, busy, busy, or they just ring. So that's another indicator. Uh, the other 28, we haven't tried them yet because we're doing the first thing, which is email them to get some leads, diligence so That's about it. For those, uh, for the people in the room that perhaps haven't done some of these crypto investigations before or are new to trying to understand um, how to investigate or where to look first, I think that um, your comments there, Joseph, really speak to how proactive um, you've been and how many, I mean, it is a community-based concept and so um, that trust exists there through trying to be proactive in reporting even when you're not quite to the reporting entity stage yet um, and really trying to get that information to the right people. So kudos. I think one of the biggest challenges crypto companies are having right now is sometimes how to let the banks know about um, trends and patterns that they're noticing. Um, we had a bank hack in Canada where user data uh, had been leaked and it was first noticed by a crypto exchange and the CEO was very, 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 very vocal um, on social media and had to be because he just wasn't able to get through to provide that information. So I, th I think for our, our bankers that are present, um, one of the things that I would say is that some of these companies are very nimble. They're seeing um, hacks, they're, they're seeing the results of identity thefts, they're seeing these patterns long before banks are able to detect them. And I think opening up those lines of communication could be incredibly valuable um, in the long term, regardless of whether or not you try to bank these folks, give them an avenue to get you data. Further to what Amber said, uh, so in the uh, bank, traditional banking space, if it smells like crypto, it looks like crypto, we don't care if they're a legit crypto uh, provider, they're out. Um, or in some cases, it's a legitimate cryptocurrency provider. They've disclosed that they're a technology company. We're not even giving them sit codes. So we sort of pigeonhole these entire types of businesses to improperly identify themselves. Um, it, it is a big problem because then we lose a lot of intelligence we would all otherwise get in business if, if you're into money. Thank you.